This is the first of two short videos from Training Great Minds on a theory that explains how we think and feel and behave. Schema theory. The next video will apply this to pain. So how do we learn without trying? It seems like quite a useful thing to be able to do. Well actually we're doing it all the time. We just don't realise that we are. It's called associative learning and it has an adaptive purpose, which means it's helped us to survive. But sometimes it becomes maladaptive, which means it's developed unhelpfully. A phobia development is a good way to understand this. So here's Millie. Her first experience of a cat was from a book that her mum would read to her. When she learned that a cat is small, has four legs, whiskers and a tail, and it has adventures. And for a while this would have been the only experience Millie had of a cat, so it became her cat schema. At some point she met an actual cat, which purred, felt soft and furry and warm, had a smell, and this new information was easily assimilated into Millie's cat schema. But one day a cat scratched her, and this caused disequilibrium of her cat schema. It became unbalanced, and this new fear information went against her schema. But we all need to maintain equilibrium, a kind of mental balance, if you like. And Millie does this by establishing a phobia. And then she makes sense of it in her own mind. Meet Tilly. She's having a party and Millie is invited, so that's nice. When she gets there, oh dear, Tilly has a cat. And this immediately grabs her attention. And she goes through a learned response, a feeling and thinking and behaving. Let's take a moment to look at how we got here. The developmental psychologist Piaget said that a schema is the basic building block of knowledge. Things that have been learned become associated into groups by their characteristics and then organised into categories, for example animals. Another characteristic, maybe fear, could apply to another category, such as pain. And all of this overlapping information provides us with layers of knowledge that can be accessed very quickly, but outside of conscious awareness. Another way of thinking about a schema is as one of millions of index cards filed in the brain. And when we come across something in our environment, or maybe we might sense something in the body, we quickly pull out the corresponding index card that provides us with an immediate script for thinking and feeling and behaving. Index cards are quite old fashioned, so think of the brain as a search engine that does a Google on a stimulus. The schema script that comes out on top is the one with strongest survival value. Not so much I'm feeling lucky as I can't take any chances. Back at the party, Enter Tilly's mum. She does everything with the girls. She takes them to school and to dancing and Millie sees her as a figure of trust and respect and authority. So she should be able to talk some sense into Millie. Here we go. Good sensible advice. But Millie only sees the cat. Her brain does a Google and provides her with a script. And because of the fear, it overrides the respect and good advice of Tilly's mum. And every time she performs her cat schema, she strengthens it. So it will always come out on top, even when she doesn't want it to. Such as when she's grown up and realises that cats aren't dangerous. Schemas can develop maladaptively and a phobia is a simple example of this. That's not too much of a problem, but think about the consequences of our South schema developing maladaptively. And how the beliefs that we hold about ourselves develop. How our emotional responses develop. How our self-talk develops. And think about our illness and pain schemas developing maladaptively. And the scripts that are provided for us by these schemas. All schemas are self-perpetuating. And so is chronic illness and persistent pain. They're difficult to change, particularly with direct advice. But, like Tilly's mum... This is most often exactly what we use to change it. 
psychological skills training will alter the script and change the schema. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next one will explore the persistent pain schema and how mindfulness can change it.